Hi everyone, my name is Clyde B. Corwright and I'm a current Cutler Center assistant and part of the class of 2023 at Babson. Today I'm going to show you how to use capital IQ for relative valuation. Relative valuation, which is otherwise known as comparable analysis, comco, or peer valuation, is a form of equity valuation that looks at a company's competitor stock prices to determine the implied stock price of the target company. Unlike intrinsic valuation, relative valuation is not based on the fundamentals of a company. Instead, the analysis starts by comparing the target company's key ratios and metrics to that of its competitors and finding its implied position within the industry. The share price of the company is then implied based on the share price of its competitors. To learn more about Capital IQ, uh, check out this Cutler Center tutorial page. So if you go to the Cutler Center website and then hit State of the Art Finance Lab Analytical Tool, tool Tutorials, um, there's an entire section for Capital IQ. Um, so you can find that here to learn more about it. To access Capital IQ, it's easiest to start at the Horn Library website. So this is linked in my tutorial, or you can access it by just Googling Horn Library Babson College. It should come right up. Then to get to Capital IQ, we're going to click this A to Z database list link just under the power search. And then in this search for databases bar, I'm going to search Capital IQ. It should come right up and you can click the link and it'll launch Capital IQ for you. One thing to note is that this won't work unless you have access to Capital IQ through Babson. So unless you're taking a finance class and principles of finance actually counts in most cases, you won't have access to this. But if you need it for a class or some other academic reason and you don't have access, you can reach out to Cutler Center Support at Babson.edu. So this is the Capital IQ homepage and it offers a variety of functions to get you started. Um, this left hand bar has a lot of links and feel free to click around and kind of get more familiar with the software. You can also use this top search bar to search for companies and it'll bring you to the information page for that company. So in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the comps analysis through Capital IQ for AT&T. So we're going to start by just searching AT&T in the search bar. You can either search the name or the ticker uh, and then just select the one that you would like to analyze. After searching for AT&T, you should land on this page. And this is called the tier sheet. It contains basic information about the company and the stock. First, we're going to be going over Quick Comps, which is Capital IQ's way of quickly finding and analyzing comparable companies. You can find the link to that under Peer Analysis. Here it says Quick Comps. So when we click that, Capital IQ will automatically generate a list of comparable companies for AT&T based on the industry and other factors. So you can see those comparable companies here. However, you might want to add more companies. So to do that, you can click this Add Companies button in the top here. You can then search by ticker, or in this case, I want to search by name, so I'm going to hit the search toggle here. And then say I wanted to add T-Mobile. I'm just going to search for T-Mobile here and hit the Go button. It'll come up with a bunch of options, and I'll pick the one that I want to add to my comps, highlight it, and then click this arrow button to move it into the selected entities. I then just have to hit this Add to Comps button, and now it is added to the bottom of my Quick Comps list. Let's say I wanted to delete the company. Um, so I just select the check mark next to that company's name, then go to this options drop down menu and hit delete. It's going to ask if you're sure. You can just hit OK. And now uh, Fox is no longer on my comparable companies list. So let's say that you did quick comps, um, you edited it, and you want to save this set of companies. You're going to go to this edit button. You're going to call it something, for example, my AT&T Quick Comp, and hit Save. And now next time when you're searching for AT&T, this comp set will come up in your drop down uh, right here. So you can always come back to this comp set. Instead of using Quick Comps, many analysts will create their own set of comparable companies for analysis. Um, to do this on Capital IQ, we're going to be hovering over the screening tab here, and then under the comparable analysis section, you're going to hit create companies. This pop-up should then appear. You can name your comp list whatever you'd like. So I'm just going to name it comp example. And then add a symbol if you want, but this is not required. Leave the type at company, which is the default, and leave the add companies option as search. You can, the access level dropdown is just for sharing purposes, um, so you don't have to mess with this then hit save. So now you'll be taken to this screen, and this is really similar to what we did in the quick comp section. You can search companies by name or by ticker and just move them over to your selected entities to add them. So now we're starting from scratch. So say I wanted to add Verizon. I moved the toggle to search because I'm searching it by name, not by ticker. 
and then I select the one that I want and move it over to the select entities. In this example, I just added some other comps based on the industry and more information about AT&T. So in addition to Verizon, I just added Comcast, T-Mobile, and Lumen by using the same technique. And then I'm just going to hit this Add to Comps button. And in order to analyze these against AT&T, you also need to add AT&T as the target company. So you do this just as you add any other company. You click on the Add Companies button. I'm going to search by name. And then I'm going to type AT&T in the search bar. Once I find it, I'll move it over to Select Entities. And here I'm going to select AT&T as on the Set Subject Company dropdown and hit Add to Comps. So now, as you can see, we have our four comparable companies and AT&T is down here as the target company. In CapIQ, there are a lot of options for how you can view the information related to your comps. So in this drop-down menu under Options, we've already kind of talked about deleting companies, but you can also chart selected companies. So if I wanted to chart all my companies together, I'm just going to select all of them along with our target company, AT&T, and then hit the Chart Selected Companies option. Uh, and then you can chart it by stock price, revenue, earnings per share, uh, and EBITDA. And this just shows a visual representation of how they're different. You can do this on different horizons as well. You can also add companies, which we've talked a little bit about. And another option is this display options button, which you can just change the way that a lot of the information is portrayed. So instead of having it down as rows, we can have it across as columns. And you can also change the period to last 12 months, latest annual, latest half, uh, etc. You can also change this date as of button. So it defaults to today, but if you want to have it as of um, year end last year, you can change that as well. And the last thing we're going to talk about is the add or display column section. So this link right under the templates dropdown, we'll just click that. And here you can change all the inputs that you see on each of the tabs. So if you remember on the last page under financial data, we had a variety of different things that we were seeing. Um, and let's say we actually wanted um, day close price, shares outstanding, let's say we wanted these instead. Um, then we could select them, reorder them, and then also add some from up here. So let's say we wanted our total revenue. We just hit add. Um, it'll come down here and then that's included in our financial data now. You can do this for each of the tabs, so trading multiples, operating statistics. Uh, if we wanted to add, let's say, EBIT to operating statistics, um, now that's added in here. And at the end, when you're done customizing your view, you can hit save. So now, as you can see, under operating statistics, we added EBIT. So let's look over here. We can see that last 12 months EBIT is listed here. So these are all the ways that you can customize your view on Capital IQ of your comps model for your specific needs. Now we're going to talk about interpreting the output of a Capital IQ comps model. The easiest way to analyze all this information is to download the information in an Excel document using this button up here. It looks like the Excel icon. So if you click that, sometimes it takes a second to load. It will download an Excel file that contains each of the tabs that's contained here. So you can look at this informa information either in Excel or in Capital IQ, but I'm just going to quickly go over each of the tabs and what they tell you. In this financial data tab, it contains information such as the latest day close price and the shares outstanding for your target company and all your comparable companies. And you may notice that uh, some of the information is missing, and that's one of the benefits of using Excel for this because you can fill in the information that's missing instead of just relying on um, Capital IQ's estimates. It also creates summary statistics, so it has a maximum value from the comparable companies in the high row, minimum value in the low row, and then a mean and median for each of these data points. And this helps you to see where your comparable companies uh, kind of are in relation to your target company. So for example, we can see that in day latest close price, AT&T is far below the mean and the median of its competitors. Similar to the financial data tab, the trading multiples tab shows financial multiples for comparable companies and the target company. And the benefit to using multiples rather than dollar values that we used in the last tab is that it accounts for the scale of the company. Just like in the last tab, capital IQ also calculates the high, the low, and the mean and the median for the comparable companies. And remember, you can always change the variables that are displayed here using that add slash edit display columns link that we used just a few minutes ago in the last video. 
This operating statistics tab is really similar. It shows the operating statistics, such as a lot of different margins and different statistics for your target company and a lot of your different comparable companies. And so you can compare them using these statistics. And again, these margins are adjusted for scale, so they're uh, good to use on comparable companies. The business description tab just shows the description of the company. And then over here, you can see where their headquarters are, different information about them. And this just shows different value propositions to the companies. It's more of a qualitative data point. This implied valuation tab, uh, this information is all available and it provides kind of an implied valuation chart to the company based on its peers. In general, this functionality is not as useful because information is often missing and the qualitative information from your research should also be considered in the comps model. And in general, Capital IQ comps provides a great starting point for making a comps model, but the information needs to be kind of thought through and revised in order to come up with a trustworthy implied valuation. So this implied valuation tab, along with the valuation chart, which can be seen also on Capital IQ, should definitely be edited and considered before looking at them as fact. This last panel, the credit health panel, is um, information about the operational credit health, solvency, and liquidity of each of the comparable companies, as well as the target company and it contains information on the credit rating, probability of default, and industry classification. This will help you better understand the companies and their differences, especially in terms of debt and capital structure. Overall, this is a broad overview of how to use Capital IQ for comps, and I hope you learned something. Thank you.